I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. months uh we're gonna go into your will and do the betterment for the village of dalton we pray that our hearts minds and spirits are in the right place and that we continue to move forward as a village in jesus name we pray amen okay having done that we're gonna go um into our order of business i miss seeing everybody and i'm so so happy to have this great group of finance committee members back together <laughs> so we're happy to move forward we're gonna it's been a few months uh, we're going to go into our old business. We'll continue with the same agenda as we move forward into a future months. We'll look at ways to enhance things, but I uh, definitely think it's important that we continue remaining consistent with knowing where we're at financially on the issues that we've had in the past and we'll be enhancing as the as time comes up. So any ideas uh, or suggestions from any board member as well is very, very welcome. So as we go into our monthly financial report, I want to mark that we're looking at our monthly financials for the month of April 2021. April has significance because it is the last month of our fiscal year. So all of the budgets that we did have uh, for fiscal year 2021 have been completed. These are uh, these numbers will be close to our year end number uh, numbers for the year on how we did. There will be within the next two months adjustments made for accruals of expenses that may not have come in that have been that have incurred throughout the year so by the time we get to july we will have our final numbers and those numbers are what we want to compare with our audit to make sure that we we've, we've had clean records uh, but these numbers do hold significance and then as we move into may we'll be starting the first month of our new fiscal year uh, with that being said we always start off with our general fund and the general fund on the packet that was presented and also um, uh, was, should have been on the website as well. If we're looking at, if you printed the packet out, it would be page 15 on the printed version and page 18 on our digital version. And looking at those numbers, it would show that for the month of April, we had a surplus before our financing operations and finance being bonds and other things that we've um, taken out over time, surplus for that month was $779,566 with a fiscal year surplus of $3,937,765. After we take into consideration the financing that we've done and financing again being the bonds and other long-term debt that we have, the monthly balance would be a negative $1.8 million, but that's uh, reflective of including all of our financing options. And our fiscal year number would be a surplus of $2,150,725. So fiscally, that surplus would mean that there has been, uh, of course, we did not achieve the revenue numbers that we expected, but our expenses uh, also have been had been managed at a rate that were better than schedule, which allowed for a surplus. So I'm going to elaborate a little bit on my understanding of it, and then I'll ask our finance guy, Chris, to um, weigh in as well from what he's seen, because he is uh, our eyes and ears at the village every day. And then I'll open it up for uh, committee members to have comment and then uh, our other board members, because we're grateful to have our trustee, I'm used to saying trustee-elect, our trustee, uh, Kiana Belcher on the line, so we want to make sure everybody gives their input. Um, so 
my understanding of our surplus 2.2 million, which of course means that we would be, we have been doing really well, but we want to make sure that if there are surpluses, we're we're committing that money into the village and making sure that we're improving uh, the roads and making sure we have the, all the hires we need. Uh, as it some of the surplus we got was $750,000 as a result of COVID relief grant funds that our administration had applied for and received, as well as $1.3 million worth of savings because we had, you know, we had we did not fill all positions within our budget. Uh, so it's a good thing that we managed efficiently when we look at our service levels in terms of ways that we can improve public works, our fire department, police department. Uh, it is very important that we have that staffed. Uh, so as a board, I think we want to take a look at uh, these are the things we have to do, or this will be the staffing levels if we wanted to continue to operate in a surplus mode or to use funds for different things, or do, is our money best spent by hiring more people? So I kind of want to throw that out there for consideration. Chris, if you have um, thoughts that you can elaborate on in terms of the surplus and way and how you see it or things that we've done well and things and areas that you would think are concerns, please do so at this time. So a few areas that to me are of a little bit of concern. So on page 10, if you're looking at electronically and page seven, if you're looking at it as a hard copy, our property taxes that we have received in fiscal 20, which would have been April 30th, 2020, we received 5.3 million in real estate taxes. Those are the monies, those are your main revenue stream to fund general operations. In as of April 30th, 2021, the real estate taxes that we have received are 4.4 million. So almost a $900,000 decrease in your main revenue stream. That is going to create a problem both on a cash flow standpoint and on a future surpluses. Because if our main revenue streams are going down, that is going to hurt. The other aspect is city of Chicago. Last year, we had 1.2 million that we received from city of Chicago. This year, $1 million, meaning that our bond payment that we have to make in December, we are going to be short and we're gonna to have to fund it either with general operation monies or water operation monies, depending on where we have the surpluses. But if our collections for city of Chicago and real estate taxes as a whole go down, those revenue streams are your main revenues. When you start losing those, you have to make it up somewhere. And that's either decreasing expenses or maximizing revenues. Any your board member have questions? One question, is there anything you think we can do on our part? Any suggestions that you think we can do? So I think one of the items we need to work on is making sure we maximize as much of our various revenues as possible, whether that's code enforcement, uh, property taxes, et cetera. We just want to try to maximize collection of as much of those revenues as possible. So that way we can at least make sure that we are getting what we're billed. So if we bill a hundred dollars, we at least make sure we get that full hundred dollars. Exactly. So overall, from your vantage point, we're doing okay, we're, we're doing okay financially as a village. I got the email. I was going through what you were saying. I have to really, really, really read it. But overall, uh, we're get, we're doing okay. So there's definitely been improvements made. I know there are still some concerns in terms of cash flow and some of those deficit fund balances. As I mentioned, there is overall, if you look at page uh, 21 and 22. You'll see your fund balances there laid out and the general fund specifically, which would be the village's operating fund. There is an unassigned balance of 2.6 million deficit. So there is still definitely um, a little bit of concern there, but I would say significant improvements. If you do see on page 25, that fund balance did increase in the general fund this year of 2.1 million. So um, Chris can speak to this a little bit more if you want to add anything, Chris, but we are definitely seeing improvements. Hey, Chris, before you um, go, I, I, did I hear the term significant improvement? Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Just want to throw that out there. All right, Chris, go ahead. So the one thing with fund balance, that is that is really what's, what the village has to operate. So 
the village has a lot of fund balance that's restricted either due to debt or cash that cannot be used for general operations. So that's why we have a $2 million deficit on the sign. That's the portion that can be used to fund just general operations that isn't restricted. The way fund balance works as a mathematical concept is you first take restricted and then committed or non-spendable, and then whatever the difference is, that's your unassigned. So because we have so much restricted or non-spendable fund balance, we have a large deficit unassigned fund balance. But overall, we're doing a lot better. Yay! That's a definite improvement. Uh, Trusty Steve, any other questions? No, no, uh, uh, I know that's been uh, a point of contention as far as the financial reality of the village. So this new administration's come that's coming in, they're inheriting a pretty, pretty well, uh, pretty decent budget. I remember the last time Lauder back and Amy came to the village, he did a presentation, this is before COVID. And he said, I've been doing this for the last six years in Dalton. He said, this is the best I've seen the village finances in. So we have to improve, true indeed, but we're, we're, we're making the progress. So that's a good thing. Okay. That is a great way to put it, yeah. I do have one question there for you. Um, I know in the initial email it mentioned that we wanted to have this discussion just for the clarity of the board and the residents. Uh, this is the, a discussion on the budget, and then on our next meeting we will be voting to approve the audit results. Um, in the e initial email it mentioned you wanted this to be distributed to the board, but wanted to wait until, I guess, is it approval or at what point in time Will this be available that we can have the residents also take a view as I'm sure there may be some residents that uh, love financials and have uh, additional questions? Yeah, we typically do not ask that you post those financials to your website until it has been approved by the board. So we want to make sure that approval happens before sharing. But of course, if there's any questions after that, we're happy to address as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions from the board? Hearing none, I want to say, uh, Ms. Jen, thank you very much for your time, and we're going to continue on with the agenda. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. You. Forward with that. Melanie Fitness, to give an update on the Melanie Fitness Center. It's still open. We, we me and, uh, I mean, the village administrator, you know, we got a new administration coming in, so I don't know what the new administration wants to do with Melanie Fitness, but it still was that we kind of slowed up on listing it. So, but it's still, the, the still condition is still good. Uh, you got the Detox Cafe that's still open. So, you know, uh, uh, Rashi dot over there needs your support. Uh, so that's the update on Melanie Fitness. It's still very, very good condition. And uh, financially, I know we're not able to open it. Um, and even with COVID, uh, you will have to dump so much more money into the cleaning of the facility if you have people coming in and out of there. So that's the update on Melody Fitness. We're kind of on a, almost on a stall right now uh, with a new new mayor and everything taking over. So uh, that's the update on both. Thank you. That's in my report. Thank you for that report. Trust regular payment register or corporate payments register. So I'll start with the corporate payments register number 185 with corporate payments of $1,047,611.75. Gross payroll for March 12th, $353,996.66. Gross payroll March 26th, $327,604.68. The Melanie Fitness Center register has payments of $6,905.63. Gross payroll March 12th, $855.11. Gross payroll March 26th. $855.11 with total corporate payments of $1,737,828.94. Uh, next being our electronic warrants payment uh, register, payment register 184 with payments of $21,351.62. Water fund payments are $285,074.23. Melanie Fitness Center register $566.31 with total corporate payments on this register $306,992.16. I motion that we pay registers 184 and 185 collectively. Second, that motion. Okay, so we have a motion and second. Any discussion from the board? Yes, um, I got a question on page five. Uh, Chris, are you here? Yes, trustee. 
Okay. Page five, Illinois Toway. It had um $1,981.05. Is there receipts for all those tolls? What is that? Uh, we received that invoice directly from Illinois Toll. So um, the details as to what each toll relates to, we didn't receive because we just got an invoice from Illinois Tolls as to the charges. I would think based on just knowing the way Illinois Tolls work, you can go online and download each transaction as to what it relates. But that's just based on personal knowledge of how when I pass a toll, I can always access to see what I was charged. Okay. And then go to page six, uh, Plum Grove. Yes. 1,722. What's that? That's for um, utility billing printing. Utility bill printing. So, so we, printing of water bills. Okay. And that where's that? I never heard of them. Uh, a few, I think six or seven months ago, the village changed from the old um, vendor to Plum Grove. So the old vendor was, oh, I can't remember their name. Third Millennium. I think, no, not that one. It was um, a different one. It was, oh, it's the cards. That's behind. It was a different vendor. I can't remember what that name was. Let me see if I can pull up a register that has that name. One moment, please. Yeah, I can't find the vendor name right now. Okay. Um, go to page seven. You got Sony Black Productions for 1300 It's like video shoot, video shoot, video shoot. What's that? Uh, that's the best of information I have on the invoice. I can forward you all the invoice for those three um, payments, those three invoices. Okay, please do. Okay, I will add it to my list. Um, I'm not at the village until Thursday, so once I'm there Thursday, I can make a copy and send it to all of you. Okay, and then what's ticket printing on page four? C CDW Government, Inc. What's that? That's a uh, CD government. That's a new um, printer for the police department for the ability to print tickets on their handhelds. Okay. Metropolitan. And then the last one is page three. Uh, Metropolitan Industries for nine hundred ten dollars. Just say service fees. That has to do with your guys's water um, infrastructure. That's a um, Matt. Are you there? Yeah, that's for the uh, pump station. That's all the uh, electronics that we have uh, contracts on for the SCADA system. Okay. All right. All right. That's it for me. Thanks, guys. Yep. Uh, Chris, this is Trustee Denton. Could you help me remember, because I don't remember, what is Location Finders International? $222,000. That is your guys' Food for Less TIFF. So you guys have a annual contract agreement with them in which um, you will pay them around 350000 for 20 years. So that is a partial 2019 payment. Okay, I remember now. Thank you much. No problem. Any other questions? I do want to let the board know that the payment for the police radios, the down payment is on this month's warrant list. So that money will, that they will receive their down payment um, after these checks are cut. Okay, Chris, we don't got any outstanding um, invoices sitting on the desk that we approved and it wasn't paid or nothing like that, right? Uh, all invoices that were provided to me have been entered. Now, if there are invoices outstanding that haven't been provided, that I will not know. But there are, I do believe that um, there are at least four, I think, any vendor, vendors that haven't issued us the invoice, they haven't been paid. But that's because we haven't received an invoice, so they haven't been included yet. Okay. And then also, just for the record, uh, there's no more purchasing or buying anything until the new board comes in. So I'm just letting you guys know, put that on hold so you don't cut checks for anybody. And if you got an issue, um, I think you should weigh in to the board so we'll know what the issue is, but don't cut any checks. So, Trustee, I just have one question. Do you mean you don't want any more services to be, you want all services to be halted until the new board? I'm a little confused as. No, okay, I elaborate, sure. No, what I'm stating is I don't want anyone that's exiting to go with our dollars, the taxpayer's money, without board approval. So don't just cut checks because someone come to you and say, cut this check, cut that check. I'm saying either A, run across the board if it's something that we need to vote on or agree on before you cut checks. Because um, when the new mayor enter uh, into office May 8th, uh, we want to make sure all our money still is there. Okay. That's it. So just I want to make sure I'm clear. Are you talking payroll or billing? <laughs> 
I'm stating, do not allow anyone to tell you to cut checks that should not be telling you to cut checks. That goes from the outgoing board. You're gonna... Trustee, I think you got frozen. <clears throat> okay, Chris, I guess I'm going to be blunt as I possibly can. Don't do anything illegal. Do not cut checks that should not be checked. I'm not talking about no employees' payroll at all. I'm not. But I was clear when I said don't give checks that should not be given. Now, if someone deserves a check and did work for for their check, of course you're going to pay the staff. I'm not talking about the staff. I said the outgoing board, the outgoing board. And I don't want to go into a whole history of why I'm saying it. We had corruption in the finance department in the past. Checks were not being paid when the board approved them. So that's why I'm making all my statements now, because a new board is coming on come May 8th. But with that being said, I want to run everything through the new board. That's it. Okay, trustee. Thank you. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone, residents. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to, uh, don't to, me to uh, be your next mayor. I want to invite everyone out this Saturday. My inauguration is at 4 p.m. at Green Park, along with the other trustees, which is Jason House, Kiana Belcher, and Brittany Norwood, and the clerk, uh, Allison Key. So please come out and join us. We will practice social distancing and um, have six feet between us. It's in the park, so everyone should be okay with that. Uh, please come no, in. Okay, and watch the whoever that is is mute their phone. I don't know if that's Rush so that they can get the information. Thank you. Um, again, the address is 721 Ingle. It's at Dalton Park this Saturday, May 8th at 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Uh, I want to say also uh, to, you know, you have the Mayor, Mary Kay, uh, Trustee Denton. You know, thank you for your years of service. Mayor, you know, all of us at one point in time, everybody on, this, on the board at one point in time were on your ticket and we benefited from you at some point. So this is just for me, on, I guess, behalf of the rest of the board, that we appreciate any good that we got from you and the good that you did for this village. So uh, I hope, as I called you, uh, Rowdy Colioni, I hope you can be around and still <laughs> care. You can still give advice and wisdom. I don't know where that last name, I don't know where that last name came from. <laughs> I hope, and I hope that, I hope that, I hope that the new administration and you, maybe they can reach out to you for some advice because um, uh, as you know, and as I think the mayor let know that the, the, the head spot gets the most darts, the most, the most people coming out and the most hate and the most, you know, the most congratulations and the most, I can say the most shine, but it comes, it's a heavy, it's a heavy weight and it's a heavy seat. So I hope you still stay around that we can still pull on your wisdom and pull on your knowledge. So we appreciate your years of service. And uh, I know me personally, you know, I want to introduce me to this, Political game, you called me and said, hey, Ed, you want to run for trustee? And, uh, uh, and I ran, we won. I won. So this is for me and everybody else on the board. We appreciate your years, man. Now it's time to go ahead and take it easy and, 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 and you know, live, live out your retirement life. Well, um, can I say something? <laughs> um, first, I got to say, uh, Trustee Den, I'm going to miss you out of everyone. Uh, you have been the mother. You have been uh, the glue to the board. Uh, I'm just going to miss your awesomeness that everybody don't see so often. So thank you for your service here at the village. I know you ain't going nowhere because uh, you and Den, Curtis, that is, uh, I will be at your door uh, tomorrow. Uh, so okay. Saturday. Okay. And, and to Mary Kay, I want to say thank you for your service as clerk here in the village of Dalton. I know you still stay in town. I pray that you do still stay here and then um, welcome me as your mayor and maybe me and you can sit down and talk from time to time. That would be great. Um, and to Mayor Rogers, um, I've reached out several times as related to your illness and um, I wish you nothing but love and support for your family and you get back to better help. I'm always about people first, regardless of our differences as politicians, because at the end of the day, we all human, we all go through things. So I still wish you nothing but love, Mayor, and regardless of our differences, you're hearing it from me. And um, I did call you, so I'm glad to see that you are talking and you're moving around. So I wish you nothing but a speedy recovery. So thank you again for your service. Have to. Mayor? Yes. Mayor, we all live. Okay. No, if they're participating and speaking, then yes. All right. Good evening, residents, board members. I am so excited to um, take my seat here as your new mayor. Um, 
I want to start by saying thank you all for voting and coming out to the inauguration, which was really nice, but super cool. So if you guys came out, um, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, because you set through that because you want to see change in Dalton. And I do want to say change is here. Um, we do have a new board, so I'm proud to say that the new board is excited to show you guys uh, this really wonderful nice unity cool. amongst our board. So I know I'm a little off topic, but I was a little excited. I had to get that out. So um, <laughs> I'm going to start the meeting. So I would like to call to order a special board meeting of the Village of Trustees. The time now is 6.42 p.m. Clerk, call the roll. Village of Trustees. The time now is 6.42 p.m. Clerk, call the roll. Ah! Clerk, call Trustee the roll. Trustee Holmes? Here. Trustee Norwood? Yes. Trustee Norwood? Here. Okay, thank you. From the board of trustees next i want to talk about uh, my virtual transition town hall meeting so um, as i promised that my administration will be one of inclusiveness um, transparency and accountability in relationship to that i'm announcing that i will be hosting a virtual transition town hall meeting for residents of dalton it will be wednesday june 30th at 7 p.m we will be hosting we will be posting the link on the village of dalton website and also emailing it out to those who have given us their email address okay next hold on a second next is in regards to the pop-up communication um, that's on the website when you click on village of dalton website you have a pop-up communication to the village of dalton residents so if you have gone to our village website lately you have noticed that we have a communication to the residents uh, in the dashboard. That will be where I will be placing important information for the residents to know. In addition, if you want to receive our emails or our text alerts, please enter into the dash and register your email address and your cell phone number. You will see that we are asking you for your cell phone carrier, and that is only because we will be able to use that to text to you without a cost to the village and it will save them and it is active um, even before the virtual town hall meeting that's happening on June 30th. Um, you can send emails to suggestions for mayor at bo.dalton.org. Bo Again, that's bo.dalton.org. Well, suggestions at bo.dalton.org. Say, say that, mayor, that's, that's suggestions at bo.dalton.org? Oh, I'm sorry. It's suggestions for mayor okay. at bo.dalton.org. Address an email address on it so that we can respond to you. Okay, and moving on back to some other issues we have. Um, I'm making this announcement publicly for the simple fact, um, I didn't do it. <laughs> the vehicle that Mayor Rogers was driving has been um, returned to us. I don't wanna say total, but it, it's, it's messed up on both sides. I sent to you guys, meaning the Board of Trustees, the breakdown from makeup for doing um, the repairs on the damage. And it came out to $6,847.58. Now it's damaged on both rear end of the truck and on the right and left side of the truck. Um, the truck, no, I can't get out where it's at, okay. <laughs> but I just wanted to make you guys aware of that because we will have to pay for it. There has not been a police report done. Um, they just dropped it off to us that way. So I couldn't tell you who did it, why they did it, who was driving the vehicle but it was the car or truck that the mayor did have. So no, I don't have a vehicle. I'm not driving a vehicle. Um, the vehicle do need to be repaired. So please read your emails and you can either email me, let me know what you guys think as it relates to repairs, but we have to repair it and no, it cannot go through our insurance because we don't have a report to attach to it. If, um, the mayor do get a vehicle. So once the repairs is done, I will uh, obtain the vehicle. But right now the vehicle is down. I don't have a vehicle that I'm driving that the village of Dalton owns. So I'm just making y'all aware of the situation. So, um, you guys can chime in as it relates to how much it costs, and then you can go, you can call Chief Collins to find out more details. If you want to go see the vehicle? I've seen the total, uh, 68.47.58. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Here now, we're going to move forward. We're going to number one discussion and action regarding appointment of interim village administrator. So, we signed it first. Yes. Okay. The person that I am 
asking for approval for is Dorothy Brown to be the interim village administrator. Um, Dorothy Brown, she has 20 years as clerk of the circuit court. She is a CPA, she is an attorney. She is familiar with management of units of local government and she has managed daily operations overseeing 1500 employees. And of course she was over a hundred million dollar budget. Um, she will be my transition manager, which I've stated several times and I'm gonna state it again. She is my transition manager and she's here until a full-time village administrator is appointed by myself and but no longer than six months. So she's temporary once again. So again, Dorothy Brown will be my transition manager and currently she is uh, going to be my interim village administrator. So I'm asking the board for a approval. Can I have a motion to approve her as my interim village administrator? So move. Is there a second? second? There's a second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? How much was you in payment? The same amount that the current uh, village administration straight up made. So how much is that? Um, I believe uh, Elizabeth was at um, $100,000. So she was $100,000 for the year. So whatever that salary is, it's the same salary that she will be getting. Prorated. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Prorated. Prorated. <laughs> so for six months, roughly $50,000, correct? Correct. And uh, this will be a full-time position? It is. So she will be here at the disposal of the staff. It will be the same terms that it was for the prior administrator. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, hopefully we have someone else. So is anyone chiming in or listening to this conversation and you're interested in being my village administrator, please reach out. Um, you might as well go see Janice. She is currently over HR, put in your application and I am interviewing now. So if I do find someone sooner, um, I will transition. So um, thank you guys. Any other questions? Yeah. Was it posted? Say that one more time. Where would this position be posted at? We will post it on the village website and regarding payment of inauguration invoices. I'm looking for a motion to approve the inauguration uh, invoices. Can I have I'd a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the, uh, the Affordable Party Planners LLC invoice and kick the rest to the next warrant list. But I make a motion to approve that one invoice um, at the total amount of $6,756. A second. All right. There's a motion to approve um, $6,756. Is there a, uh, and there's a second. Is there any discussion? What services did they provide? Um, they're all on the invoice. I didn't get it. Did you not get the complete package from the clerk? Because some of the items you sent were blank. Uh, no, okay. it's, it's, well, let me it's, pull it up. Clerk Key, can you read to her the items from the invoice for Affordable party planner. Sure, and they should be attached. Um, this was for the backdrop, banners, flowers, poster, cards, mask, hand sanitizer, t-shirt, food, DJ, staff, and other miscellaneous items like um, invitation flyers, congratulation cards, invitation posters, retractable banners, and the setup and breakdown of the decor. And also, I'm sorry, decoration for the dinner, the inauguration dinner. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. You're welcome. And if you didn't get it, trustee, I'll send it to you again. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Are there Mayor. any other questions? Mayor, if I could be recognized. Sure, go ahead, trustee. Yeah. Just kind of just a brief discussion that I think uh, the mayor and myself had about this is making sure that uh, we, um, from a budget standpoint, just making sure that items over 5,000 are, are presented to the board in advance. I think because of some of the, the speed of some of it, this came out faster, but I think we want to make sure that we uh, maintain what our, pract our practices are around the budgeting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, quick question. Um, uh, the motion was to approve for the affordable party planner and then it stated to send the other items to the warrant list. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. So uh, them being put on the warrant list, does that mean that the village is still going to pay for them? Correct. Or, it, or it's still up for a vote. You know, it's still up for a vote. Anything on the warrant list is still up for a vote. Okay, I just need a clarity. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, there's a motion and second on the floor. Please call the roll clerk, please. Trustee Holmes, absent. Trustee Norwood? 
Trustee Steve? Aye. Trustee Belcher? No. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Brown? Aye. All right, motion carries uh, three, two, one. Four to one. Four to one, I'm sorry, four to one. I'm like, who missed that? Four to one. Okay, moving on. Uh, for item number four is being removed or it is being attached to the warrant list as well. So we're not gonna pay it out today. So we're gonna remove item four and it will be on the warrant list. Um, number five, uh, discussion and action regarding roof repair of the village buildings. So that's fire station number one and two, police department and village hall. Now this is also being removed because you guys do have one quote and you will get two more, which uh, one came in today and we will send you guys an email and you guys can decide from the email whether you guys want to go with A, B or C for um, the vendor to repair the roofs. But I will pray you guys look at this or go to each station. It's really, really bad. It's been like that over time. And I do want um, the employees to know that we do care about them and they shouldn't be coming to work with holes and roofs and leaking in locker rooms, things of that nature. And I don't want anything to turn to mold. So if you guys can go, just look and um, be prepared to give an answer as relates to which uh, proposal you want to go with. Uh, moving on, item number six, discussion and action regarding replacement of lights at certain locations. So one big thing that I love about Stacy, who is currently now uh, superintendent here in Dalton, um, he came and hit the ground running. So our lights was out on Sibley and literally, like I said, last board meeting, he got them turned right on. There are any questions before we move on or Okay. So next is number two, repairs to Village Hall. So, wow, when I say the first week has been mind boggling, the set first 72 hours was crazy, guys. So I just want to report to you some things that I found out and <clears throat> excuse me, get your opinion as it relates to moving forward. So first, I would like to give the Village Hall a facelift. So that consists of a roof, which we just spoke about, a uh, paint building, that's the outside and inside. So uh, paint the inside a nice pretty color so we can uh, help with the morale um, put flooring down we have carpet currently um, put signage up, signage up for department heads so say for instance you come to village hall and you're looking for housing or building and permit so you know the signs that hang down where it's in the air but they hang over the department so everybody wants like where's housing where's building and also landscaping on the outside so beautifying the area with flowers plants and upkeeping because we write a lot of tickets, but when you come to Village Hall, we need a ticket. So I would like um, your input as it relates to any of the items I spoke of, or if you got any suggestions, or maybe something that I could have missed that you think needs some attention. So that's what this item is going for. Anybody got any input? One, only question I, or concern I have I, with all these updates or anything that gets spent, I, I mean, I hope we don't see it. I hope the money doesn't get spent and then we see it afterwards, because you know, the credit card can get spent, things get purchased on the credit card, and we, we see it afterwards. Mm -hmm. Are we going to do, we're going to go forward with this or we want to, and I defer to trustee house on this, are we going to wait till the budget comes? Because I know this stuff is expensive. Yeah. Uh, uh, so how, how are we going to talk about paying for this? Sure. Uh, and be, make sure we know that the board is well aware of it. So we don't want to just get blindsided and we have to approve a, 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 a big payment for something that we didn't know about until we got the borders in. Okay. So um, one thing about how relationships and connections with outside people is, um, they give you a lot of things. And what I mean by that is, um, I did contact Menards. Um, I got a quote on the floor here in Village Hall and it ranged, I think, no more than $12,000. So I asked them to donate us the floor. So I'm waiting on a response from them. So we wouldn't even pay anything. So if you actually see me doing something, it would be, I got it donated. But somebody gave it to Village Hall. So I'm waiting on a response. Um, the guy did say that he's willing to do it, but he has to get an okay from corporate. So once I get that okay and I get the great news, I'm gonna let you guys know. Um, guess what, I say to Village $12,000 because I went, and got it donated from someone that's in our backyard. We spent a lot of money with them and I'm asking them to help us with several projects throughout the village. And right now they're on board for two of them. Um, that's one way. Another way is reaching out to uh, our other government bodies that actually bring things into the communities, whether it's our commissioners, our state reps, and asking them for resources on how I can get it, uh, I wanna say for free, but like a grant or things of that nature. So them are the things I've been working on. The third thing is of course the budget. The budget is always um, the last resort to have it paid by the taxpayers, but I'm always trying to find another revenue before I go that route. So say that I can't get certain things donated, then I will either poll the board through an email and say, hey guys, I'm in Village Hall, um, I'm trying to buy paint, or I want to get flowers for the outside and it costs this over my threshold of $5,000. And then you guys will either A, okay it or, or not. But I will talk to Prosperous, which I have been doing. They've been telling me which line items and, and where I can take money from. So it will never be new money. Um, that's not fair. I will never, I will make sure I budget for it. I'll make sure I do run it through the board. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I'll chime in if I, just briefly, if, if I can here. 
Um, for the, uh, I agree with the uh, kind of trustee Steve, uh, in just in terms of the budget, you, you covered it already. So just making sure that we have it budgeted and things that within the line currently we're in budget season. So we don't have a physical budget. So uh, if, they, if people will donate it, of course, I'm all for it. If not, I would say let's uh, try to pause until we have a physical budget that's been approved. Okay. Thank you guys for all your concerns. And I do take it uh, to heart. So I, I got it. Um, next is resurface uh, parking lot. So everyone, every trustee has been here at Village Hall. Um, if you go in the basement, there's a hole where it's leaking um, in the basement where everyone's offices are. So I'm asking the board to consider uh, repaving the parking lot because the offices are above the parking lot. Um, if you guys can um, think about that, and I don't have the quotes as of yet, um, I'll just put it on here for discussion so you kind of know what's going on, getting you a 411. Um, if y'all got any questions or any other way that we can make it work, I'm all for it, but we do need it before it gets worse. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they they below. Yeah, they below the parking lot. <laughs> so the parking lot is here, and the offices is underneath. So the whole wherever is that they have to reseal it by putting a new quote uh, coat over um, the parking lot. Ash Hall. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Next is the Fourth of July firework celebration. So you guys know I'm all about community involvement, community engagement. So I thought that it was very important for us to do something big, especially after COVID. Everyone has been uh, cooped up in the house, quarantined, wearing masks, and I just felt the need to do something special for the community. Um, the biggest uh, holiday coming up is July 4th, besides Father's Day, I want y'all to get me. So Father's Day first, and then um, uh, 4th of July. So I was thinking that we can have a 4th of July celebration. I did collab with our partnering uh, government officials, which is a uh, park. They said they would give us $5,000 and they matching us and we're giving $5,000. Um, the bid came in at, I think, 15000 but the first proposal, not bid, I'm sorry, first proposal came in at thirty five dollars to $45,000. So I told President Cleos, no way we're doing that. Uh, number one, we're going to get that kind of money in a short period of time. So they went out, found another proposal, and they are at $15,000. We have to put down $5,000, uh, which I, I told him the board did agree to, that I'm just making sure we're still on task for that. And he having this board meeting tomorrow, if you guys want to come, they are having a swearing in as well, and they're supposed to vote on their $5,000. Um, so that's $10,000. So now the other person that I did ask is uh, School Board 205, which that's where we're going to host the fireworks show. Um, of course, they said they're giving us the land, they're giving us the spot, but you know me, I'm still negotiating. So I'm waiting on a definite yes or a definite no. Right now it's kind of 50-50 because they're saying if we're donating the land, then you guys should get the funds to cover it. So my next step was to go to the library board. So I'll meet with them this week, see if they would donate the difference because we short five grand if each one of us is paying $5,000. Um, I'm just giving you an update. And the only date that was available as well, too, was uh, July 2nd. And so not the 3rd, not the 4th. I was shooting for the 3rd because it's a Saturday. The 4th of July is on a Sunday. So that means we will do it Friday evening um, if the board agrees to everything I'm saying. So now I just want to hear from you guys how you feel, what you want to do, or if y'all got any other suggestions. So um, go ahead. Um, anybody got any suggestions? So we only got an okay from the park district, nothing from the library or school. Nothing from either one of their meetings tomorrow, correct? Correct. Okay, so the library and school district are no longer on board. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. I said I'm waiting for them to give me a response. So I have a response okay. as it relates to the amount because it's five thousand dollars. Now each one of them can do twenty five hundred apiece, but the Thorn Ridge is saying that they're giving us the land, meaning the spot to have it to host. So they're saying why pay? So I'm still asking them. Yes, I think you still should pay, especially I'm from that school. So uh, right, right, right. Uh, trustee, I was supposed to say Brittany. Trustee Norwood, we got TR. So yeah. I'm just trying to get them to basically just. Um, you know, donate the land, meaning the location, the host, and also give us five thousand dollars. But if they're saying um, they're not, my backup plan was uh, school board one forty eight, one forty nine, and I know all of them over there. Darlene Gray, that's Larry Lawrence, so I'm call, I called everybody. So somebody gonna give it up. <laughs> but right now we at us giving five thousand dollars in the park district, giving five thousand dollars. Okay, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. So are you okay, uh, Trustee Brown, with that Friday? That's the only date for the yeah. control. You okay with the date? Okay. It's going to be at Thorn Ridge football field where they had the graduation this Sunday. Yet. Okay, that's fine. Um, any other trustee want to chime in? Everybody okay with it? Not okay with it? I'm, I'm okay with it. You okay with it, trustee? Steve? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I love fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we know what you're going to be doing. <laughs> trustee how? I, I was just at, we. I think we appreciate the update and keeping us posted on it. So uh, yeah. please continue to do so. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, trustee Felcher? I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. Well, I will let them know, and I will be attending um, the inauguration of our young uh, commissioner, Kyle Rochelle, who you guys just gave five hundred dollars to uh, for his event. Uh, if y'all want, you're more than welcome. It starts at seven o'clock, and it's going to be in their banquet hall area. They have a board meeting, and then he'll get sworn in. He's only twenty-two years old, so he's a baby. So, Trustee Norwood, get him quick right now. So. Cool. Thank you. 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 Thank
Chris and uh, residents of Dalton. Um, today, we're calling for order of a notice of public hearing. Um, notice is hereby giving that pursuits of section 8-2-9 of the Illinois Municipal Code, the mayor and the board of trustees of the village of Dalton, Cook County, Illinois, will hold a public hearing at 11 a.m. on Saturday, July 31st, 2021, via Zoom, via Zoom to consider the appropriation ordinance for the fiscal year commencing May 1st, 2021 and ending April 30th of 2022. Members of the public will be allowed to comment on the proposed ordinance at the public hearing. A copy of the appropriation ordinance is available for viewing in the office of the village of clerk. Um, clerk, clerk key, can you please uh, call the I, I got a quick question. Is uh, the village administrator on here? Ms. Brown? She is. I'm gonna edit, was your email blast sent out about this? I'm, I, I don't see it in my email, so maybe I missed it. I'm not sure. But uh, email blast? Yeah, sent out about this meeting. It went out to all department heads and trustees and, and it was handled, I'm, I'm, the clerk handled I'm, 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 the publication uh trustees yeah. was answering. And it was also posted, like the public hearing was posted ten days ago. The agenda was posted maybe five days ago. It's been out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about this to the to the residents for the village. Uh, usually we send an email blast out, but okay. I wouldn't have any residents email. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I, I, did I say clerk or the village administrator? I meant village administrator. I was talking about okay, Ms. Well, Brown. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was it was communicated to the public. So if the public wants to tune in now, they can. So everyone has it. Everything was done legal above bar. Um, it was in the paper. It was 10 days. The clerk did her job. So we did our part. And that's up to the residents to get on and ask questions if they like. So there's one question, and it's about this. When was the proposed budget published in the newspaper per ordinance? Um, go, go ahead, clerk. Okay, it was posted on July 21st. I mean, sorry. Yeah, July 21st. And it was in the Tribune paper. On the site, is it published this meeting, please? I'm not on the site right now to tell you where to go, but if you're on here, um, you're about to hear the budget. Um, it will be broken down to you. So if you got any questions about the budget, you can ask your questions. Are we going to really get clear answers about this budget? Why are salaries combined on line items? Example, police chief line item says 270,000, village admin says 200,000. Um, Chris, can you answer that? In the notes or in descriptions column, it explains who who is included in each line item. So the 270,000 for police chief was police chief and two deputy chiefs. The 200,000, was uh, the village administrator and the executive assistants for the village administrator and the mayor. So each line item for payroll purposes has a detailed breakdown of what each one consists of. I didn't hear I a second. second. I second. Thank you. So, in Colorado. Trustee Holmes. Sure. Trustee Norwood. Yeah. Trustee Steve. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. And Trustee Brown. Aye. Okay. Um, meeting adjourned at 11.36 a.m. All right. Thank you. Um, so we're going to move over to notice of special meeting of Board of Trustees via Zoom live stream on YouTube, Saturday, July 31st, 2021. Um, the time is now 11.37. And can you call the roll? Sure. Trustee Holmes. Here. Trustee Norwood? Present. Trustee Steve? Present. Trustee Belcher? Here. Trustee House? Here. Trustee Brown? Present. We have a quorum. All right, thank you. And if you all will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Under old business, discussion and possible action require you for approval of ordinance number 21-004, adopting a budget appropriation ordinance for FY uh, fiscal year of 2021 through 2022. Can I get a motion to pass the budget? And is there a second to pass the budget? Okay, just for the record, guys, you have to put a motion and a second on it on the floor to open up discussion and you can amend or adjust. So can someone second his motion to um, pass the budget? I have an amended motion for the budget. Okay. So 
I would motion that the ordinance number 21-004 be approved with uh, the amendments of line 1-12-422 uh, being reduced 55,000 for the grant writer and transferred to 112-549 to, to put it as a contract. Uh, second amendment will be reducing line 112-424 from 70,000 to 35,000. Third amendment, reducing line Wait a minute. one. Tr trustee, so you amended 70K to 34K, what is that for? 70 to 35K for a reduction. Of what, of what? Of what? Well, if I may, I want to complete the uh, motion and then uh, we're in, in discussion. With the Hold on, Tr trustee, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, yes, if I may. Yes, yes. It, does the first movement withdraw his motion and allow trustee House to make a motion with certain amendments? Because that's a proper parliamentary procedure. There's now two motions with zero seconds on the floor. So if the first movement wants to withdraw his motion, and trustee house can make an motion to approve the appropriation ordinance as amended subject to the following amendments get the second and then list the amendments right so basically as i stated they have to make a motion in a second and then talk about discussion to basically amend it how they're correct now. okay so correct. let's go You're back correct. to what, so I, either, what i just stated right okay so is there a motion in a second to approve the budget and then you can make your amendments is what i was stating in the beginning so is there a first and second i know that trustee homes um motioned it and is there a second and then you can make your adjustments to trustee house so let me just for clarity so i thought the motion would come if if we were the amendments to be made the amendments would be included with the motion so you could do it one of two ways the mayor is absolutely 100 percent correct so you can make the second and then ask for a motion to amend it with the listings or trustee Holmes could withdraw his motion mm -hmm. you could make a motion as amended the simpler way to do it is the way the mayor said it if you right. make the motion you get the second you could second it, trustee, and then mm -hmm. you could ask for a friendly amendment or a motion to amend with those changes. But now that there's a motion on the floor, it has to be second or when you try motion to go forward, that doesn't work under Robert's rule. So what you could do is second it and then ask for a motion to amend as follows. And then you just go through the changes that you want to make. That's how I would. Yeah, well, no, I'm so not... I have a question. Oh, no, trustee. But you're wrong. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Trustee Belcher, one second. Just for clear, I'm not, I will not second that motion. Okay, so if no one's um, going to second his motion, um, it would die. Then you can go ahead and make your own motion. So anybody- Madam Chair, can we ask, thank you, thank you, sorry. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, can we ask, no, no one will second the first motion that was made, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, nobody's answered. So yeah, the motion is not perfected. So now we can go on to a second motion. Trustee House, if you wanna make your motion now, then the form that you wanted to would be the appropriate time. Okay, so is this the time to make the motion? As I yep. said, this would be the appropriate time. Okay. Uh, so I would motion for the approval of ordinance number 21-004 with the following amendments. Uh, line 1-12-422 uh, reduced by $55,000 for the grant writer, transferring that to line 1-12-549, putting that as a contracted uh, service. Line 1-12-424 reducing from 70,000 to 35,000. Line 1-12-423 reduced from 95000 to $47,500, uh, reducing the number of representatives from four to two, and line 1-12-563, reducing from 30000 in trainings to $10,000, $10,000 in training. <laughs> okay. Y'all don't want to get educated. Okay, got it. Uh, is there a second for um, Trustee House's motion? I'll second it. Second. Okay, so there's a motion in second. So now we're going to open the floor for any discussion. So, Trustee House, um, can you break down each item that you are adjusting? What it uh, is? The, the first, first line item was uh, $55,000 for the grant writer, tra uh, transferring that from employee to a contract service. The second line item is the youth the youth services reducing from $70,000 to $35,000. Fourth item is the customer service reps, the part-time customer service reps, reducing it from four to two. And the fourth item is reducing the trainings from 30000 to $10,000. The overall summary of request for reductions is uh, cost savings to the village. Okay. So um, each trustee, I will hear from you as relates to what uh, trustee house is proposing. And then the grant writer, what's the, the ending amount? Was it thirty-five? Is that what I heard? Uh, the grant writer is being tra transferred from one line to another with the same amount. Okay, so they're just going to be contracts. Yes. Okay. Okay, so let's start with um, Trustee Norwood about the items that Trustee House has proposed. So, um, I'm, in regards to the the 
line items that we removed, um, my main concern was the, the amount um, of spending. So that's how I went about um, making changes. Um, I wanted to be more conservative in terms of the spending. So I did hear that, um, I did hear Trustee House, um, our finance guy, state that this budget is spending more um, in this year than we've spent in the last eight years. So I took that in consideration. I looked over the budget. I understand that we need police officers. So of course we didn't want to touch that. I understand that we need firefighters. Didn't want to touch that. I understand that we need public works. Didn't want to touch that. Um, the grant writer, I feel that the grant writer should be on contract. Um, as I explained to you before, I think that with a position like that, I'm more comfortable knowing that we're actually, um, they're actually doing their job and bringing in revenue. So I feel as if we have them on contract. Um, as I think I stated to you before, if we do that, then it can come across us if they're making money for the village and they're bringing in the funds um, as they should, then I say that we can continue their services. Um, so that's why I decided to move that to contract. Um, the youth services, I say that um, as the head of the youth committee, um, I'm with funding the youth committee, um, but I want to see where it goes. So I figure, hey, let's start with 35,000. Let's see what we can do with that. And if we need more, we can always amend it. I think as you stated to me before, um, in regards to the customer service reps, um, I understand we've always seen Larry, so I'm, I'm for um, adding another customer service rep. And in regards to training, I understand that we need training. So I've done the math and with the 10,000 that we have, we can still co complete the trainings necessary. And if we need more money there, I figure that we can always, like you stated to me before, um, add to that. But my main concern was the overall spending. So when I looked at the budget, um, how I made my decision again, as I looked over the things and decided what was what we could prioritize at a later point or things that we can always make changes to um, at a later time once we bring in more money or those projections are we actually receive some of the money there in the budget. Okay, thank you. Trustee Brown? Okay, as Trustee Norwood stated, um, I felt the same way as in regards to the reduction. And again, as far as the clerks, we have always um, worked on a reduced staff anyway. So we did add to, and um, if, if to need it later on, then we can always add. But to this entire thing that we ask for reduction, later on down the line, I'm sure if there is an increase needed, that we can always go back and make those changes um, to these necessary services that we spoke about today. Again, as she said, fire, uh, police, public works are our number one priority. So again, let's not touch those, but we can't make a reduction in these other areas. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, Trustee Steves. Yes, can y'all hear me? Yep. Um, uh, you know, the, the trustees, we um, came up with these small amount of uh, reductions or small amount of changes. Still, uh, it's still a, um, a heavy the administration budget raised up a lot. It's still, a, it's still a, a decent amount of money that we're spending more than we have in the past. I think we went from 22 million to 24 million. But uh, uh, I think the administration got 98 to 99% of the things that, um, that was proposed. So it's our efforts to, uh, to, to work with the administration and and be conservative, try to be conservative our spending. Uh, the town is in a better financial condition than it has been in the past some years now, and that's from conservative spending every year. So uh, I think this is a, um, a still, it's still a balanced budget, a small surplus, and we get some things that we need. I know the public works need it, the fire, uh, uh, more police officers, I think 10 police officers. Um, so um, I think this is a, a balanced budget and it's, it, will help, it will help the town to move forward. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Belcher. Uh, we didn't catch it. Trustee Belcher. That I have no comments. Okay. So you have no reasons for why you are. So you're in agreement with what he's proposing? I, I am in agreement with what uh, Trustee House is the amendments. Okay. So do you want to get explanation to the residents of why you agree with it? No, I don't. All right. Um, next, uh, Trustee House. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Okay. So, Bessie, I just went through every trustee to go off of your uh, reason for cutting or whatever uh, it is. Trustee Holmes, trustee Holmes wasn't asked. Uh, tr uh, trustee Boucher, you're out of order. I, I have the floor. Um, so, just give me a second. Trustee House, as I was stating, um, the items that you're proposing, I was just asking each trustee their reason for why um, they want to cut. So, if you can give me your reasons for why you want to cut oh, the items. I'm sorry. My, my original statement was uh, overall was cost savings to the village. So, that's why you want to reduce each item? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Holmes? Good evening. Good, good morning. Good morning. Um, reason for why we need what we need. Um, I spoke to almost every trustee that's related to the budget. 
we had a budget meeting last Monday. And um, if anybody wanted to cut, adjust, you, your time was then, not the day of passing. Um, that way, everybody would have been on one accord. And we could have got through whatever the dis dis disagreements are for cutting the budget items. Grant writer, if I stated always before, we need a full-time grant writer. We need someone to go get the money, like how we've been doing before. Um, did you guys know that we didn't have a SAM number or DUCS number? And since 2013, we have not been writing federal grants. Now, we do the fill-in-the-blank grants. Um, that's okay. But right now, we're trying to get um, different money, infrastructure money, different things of that nature. And as it relates to the youth, I'm big on youth. I grew up here in Dalton. I don't think that's right that you guys will cut the budget to hire kids when, you know, uh, carjackings are, are happening and they're kids. They're kids that's doing all the crimes that's related to Dalton, whether it's um, shootings, um, drive-by stuff, all kinds of stuff. I can go on and on. So I'm saying that we have to figure out a way to employ the youth and make sure that they um, have an outlet. As it relates to getting grass cut, y'all know that I have used my resources as it relates to, to the township to get grass cut. Um, that's a program that I want to initiate here in the village of Dalton to have the youth cut the grass, do the, do the weeds, and also um, do the snow. Customer service reps, um, we are in need of help with answering phones. If anybody that's watching this, uh, pay attention to the phone lines. Uh, we do not answer the phones here because we are overbooked with complaints. So sometimes they come to Larry and they bounce to everybody's um, department, um, the clerk's department, uh, Stacy's department over there at Public Works. So they can't really fully do their job because they're constantly on the phone taking care of that um, training. <laughs> I had that shocked me for you guys don't want training to get educated as being a new elected official. Um, everyone needs to go to training because obviously everybody don't know their title, their position here and what it entails as it relates to being a trustee who legislates the mayor government governs and um, the clerk. So I think everybody needs to um, engage in more training. Um, there is a motion and there is a second on the floor. Um, I'm okay with whatever the board of trustees have decided. And I will always, always govern the town and do what's best for the residents. Uh, services was put in by myself uh, for public works, for um, public safety, which is firemen and also the police. Uh, you know that there is a spike in crime in Dalton and we do need more officers. We need to make sure we patrol our beats and make sure the community feels safe with what the board has decided. Um, and also uh, making sure that they have the services, which now I feel they have due to myself putting them in the budget. Uh, I am ready to make a vote. And Clark Key, you can call the run. May I, may I be recognized? Well, it's not, we weren't doing a long drawn out discussion. That's why I let everybody talk, talk on the floor, say how they felt. And I want her to call the roll so now that the residents can be heard. You guys made your decision. Just, just one thing I just want to clear up you, that was misstated. Okay, let me call the roll yeah. first. Again, on the citizens' address, you can speak because I don't want to make it a back and forth. I let everybody speak and I said my piece and we want to go, go forward. So, trustee, hold on one second, hold on one second. Yeah, may I be recognized and make a statement? Uh, the statement was made about part time grant writer. We just made it a contract for the same amount. So it's not a, it's not part time. It's the same 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 amount of payment. It's just a contract. That's it. Because we 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 all think we all understand and realize the need for a grant writer. We just wanted to put it on the contract. That's it. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I'm okay with whatever you guys decide to do. Believe it or not, and uh, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to make sure the residents are okay. So uh, I just thought that you guys said that eighty five thousand dollars of a twenty four million dollar budget is being conservative that just it is not how wing the other it's like it's eighty five thousand dollars you took out of the budget for small items compared to things that's really needed to fix what we all ran on so i'm just um gonna move forward anybody else want to make a statement before i conclude this i'd like to be recognized there okay go ahead trustee yeah, i'm saying i want to say yes when they say when you're saying cut the you i mean i think that it was you that explained explained to me that at any given time we can always add money to the budget, meaning if we have it reduced it at this point to, to take down the spending as of now, due to the fact that a lot of these numbers are projections, then we can always go back and make changes. So for instance, if we limit it to 35,000, that does not totally mean that if they if the youth program, and I'm asking if the head of the youth committee, it doesn't mean that if we need more money, we can't go back to the board and ask for some at a later time, correct? Yeah, you can always okay. adjust the, um, the budget. But my thing is, we need that now. So why would you guys cut that? That's not going to hurt us at all. When I created the budget, the budget was at a surplus of $13,000 overage. And everything was included that everybody wanted. We even gave the clerk a full-time uh, clerk with benefits. So everybody got what they wanted. So for the cut, little things such as, which is big to me, the you, when we need to create things to give them stuff to do, I just didn't think that was um, right. I think we should definitely leave that there. 
and we shouldn't go back and amend that due to the fact that we're still cutting high grass, due to the fact that weather is going to shift and you can still keep them employed here in the village of Dalton as it relates to, uh, what is it, uh, leaves, to remove the leaves and then also a snow removal service. So either way, I'm going to create it just so that we have that here in the village of Dalton. I was just um, hoping that the board was with me on making sure the youth was currently working and constantly working throughout the year, throughout the season. So that was my thing. Mayor? So, Mayor? Yes. Mayor, I do uh, want to add uh, one note. Oh, go ahead. No, this is Chris. Okay, Chris. I do want to add one note. If at a later date the board does decide to raise the budget, the board can only raise the budget up to what is currently thing. They can change the budget lines, but they cannot raise the overall budget for each fund without going through the same process they're going through now. So if down the line they do want to raise the budget for the youth, they would have to equally offset something on a different line item or redo this entire budget process with public hearing and everything. Mm -hmm. Mayor, may I say one thing? Yes, uh, just for the record, um, you said clerk, and I just want to clarify that it's deputy clerk position, just yeah. for the record. Yeah, it is. It's deputy okay. clerk for um, full time for okay. Clerk Allison Key. So, okay, moving on. So, um, Clerk Key, can you call the room? Sure. Trustee Holmes? Aye. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Steve? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. And Trustee Brown? Aye. An amended budget passed. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, next. I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. What was I swear? I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Drunk as f yeah. Yes, it ain't the city. Oh, my name is Jimoto, and you said I ain't the city. Said I ain't the city. Imagine if my small business blew up overnight and I woke up to some sales. Boost this video so people who like my products can find me. Algorithm. Where you at, bitch? Cause I'm tired of posting viral content and getting two and a half likes. We finna fight, ho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y